Hello. How is your Sunday going? Mmm. I already got my coffee. And I just went to... Oh, my sponsor called me back. I just went to Target. Because tonight is date night with Alex. And I got two shirts. <clears throat> I got this one, this like peach colored shirt. And I'm gonna wear jeans. Like a pair of Joe's jeans. And then I have these Sperry wingtips that are like suede that I love so much. And then I got this shirt that's like a roll nut. Do you see? It's like really a cool collar. It has like no collar. It looks really good on me. If I do say so myself, trying to look a little sexy for my husband for a date night. We are going to dance kaleidoscope, which is super cool. If you've never heard of it, you should look them up online on the Google. I just realized yesterday that when I went to the library, I was returning all these books, and I was kind of going through which ones I wanted to return, and I had found like four in the back that I hadn't returned. Anyway, now I am. When you're in a parking lot and you go forward and you're like in that front row, are you ever worried you're gonna like start rolling and then you're gonna be like, have one of those curb things? I always worry about them. Um, and now I am going to the post office because I haven't been in a couple days. Have I? And then I'm gonna go home and get ready for a date night. I'm really excited about this. And um, <clears throat> if you didn't watch on my main channel, I posted a video about social anxiety, my living with social anxiety and how it's really hard for me. And, um, you know, situations like this, like just going out to events and date nights and things like that are very scary for me. Um, I know it sounds crazy and people are like, really? Um, but go over there and watch the video and it'll explain why, but I've kind of had to work myself up all day to being kind of like, I'm excited to go. Um, oh, I'm getting a call I need to take, so let me call you back. Let me call you back. Let me be right back. Okay, so <laughs> first it was my sponsee, this guy that I sponsor that called me. And then it was my sponsor <laughs> that called me. So I've basically been in the parking lot at the post office, which I got nothing except for that my P.O. box I have to pay for the next six months. This is the only exciting thing that I got in my post office. No postcards, no letters, no books, no Range Rover keys. <laughs> oh, Alex and I <clears throat> both slept till like 1.30 today. And I woke up and he was just kind of like holding the dogs, looking at me and he goes, I am so tired today. And I go, I am so tired too. He goes, what's wrong with us? I go, I don't know. And I felt like shit when I woke up, but I felt really good now. Like I feel, um, I feel like awake and good. So, yeah. say. I am like reading all these books for all these readathons and I was sitting out <clears throat> on my patio today <clears throat> watching a bunch of videos and then I was like watching all of these drama videos about Jeffree Star kicking his boyfriend's brother out of the house. Do you guys watch drama videos at all? I very rarely do anymore but for some reason I started watching these and I was like I kind of miss doing drama videos on my main channel sometimes. I was like I think I'm gonna go back and do a drama video. And, um, because I just think it's, like, ridiculous that, and all these people justify what they're saying for 10 minutes before they even say anything. It's like, just say what you have to say. It's your friggin' opinion, you know? Do you guys watch The View? Those women on there, they, like, say what they want to say and they don't even think about it. I mean, I'm not really sure why Whoopi Goldberg is the uh, expert of the world. I thought she was a comedian and an actress. And that Joanne Behar, or whatever her name is, I do not like her. I, she rubs me the wrong way. I filmed all my videos yesterday for today. So I put up a review of The Hate You Give. That's on my Peter Likes Books video channel. And 
then um, I put up about living enthusiastically on my so-called healthy life. And then I put up um, an eating show, Whole Foods Hall eating show. That was fun to do because I love uh, Whole Foods, but it's expensive as all get out um, on my main channel. And then I also did one talking about my social anxiety. Oh, I was just talking about that earlier on here. And um, yeah, and then I put my vlog up today. So I look kind of like doing my videos like a day or two in advance. Like I really enjoyed doing that. So when I got up today, I just kind of like made the thumbnails and put them up. And um, I started uploading my vlog last night when I slept. So it was like super easy just to put it together when I got up. It was like already done. And um, I'm like, I need to do this more often. Like this is like planned ahead. This is like smart. This is Peter Mon being smart. Jeep Wrangler so bad. People ask me all the time, they're like, if you could own any car in the entire world, what would you own? Well, two of them. I would own a vintage Porsche Carrera top that has a sunroof, like not a sunroof, but the top comes off. And I would get a Jeep Wrangler, like a big one, fully loaded. Or do you guys know those old like beach mobiles that are called Thangs, T-H-A-N-G, look them up. I wanted one of those for so bad. I also wanted like for a long time like vintage Land Rovers that have like all the wood on the side. They're so hot, I love those. So many people have uh, Jeep Wranglers now, but I love them. When I used to go visit my friend in Denver, he and his husband both had them and he had a black one and his husband had an orange one and it sounds cheesy but it like it would look like a big old Cheeto but it didn't it was actually kind of a cool one but anyway they were uh, automatic they weren't manual and I so but I drove stick years ago my very first car was stick now my second car was stick and um, I kind of sometimes miss driving stick so when I would go out there so that he could drink when we would go out, like I would drive the Jeep. And so I got to, we, oh my Lord, we had so much fun. Oh my Lord. We had so much fun driving around the day, uh, during the day. We would drive, just drive around Denver through the park and just through the housing neighborhoods and just listen to music. And he'd make these special CDs for when I came to visit and we would just sing and we listened to that old Climax song, Smoking in the Ladies Room, or whatever that song was called. Good times back in the day. I just love driving around. People are like, you are in your car all the time. I love driving around. I love it. I remember in that movie, uh, Mermaids, when Cher says to, uh, what's her face? I can never remember her name. Winona Ryder, she goes, Cars are freedom. <laughs> That's so true. They are. You can get in your car and just be gone like that, right? Oh, you want to go to Florida tonight? Yeah, let's go. Gone like that. And I love it. I think it's fun. The last summer that I went out there to visit him was the year that I met Alex. And... Um, were pulling some shenanigans that summer. I went out there literally once every three weeks and stayed with him for a week. It was right after my mom passed away. Oh my God, I had so much fun. He lived right in Cherry Creek in Denver in a gorgeous townhouse that overlooked the mall and everything. Oh my God, we'd just go to get coffee at Starbucks and sit outside with his little dog. We had so much fun. And, um, I remember that American Boy song by Estelle. Do you guys know that song? Is that who it's by, Estelle? Came out that year. And um, every bar that we would go out to that weekend had it. And there was this bar in Denver at the time that was called Vinyl. Or maybe that was just like what it was called on Sunday nights. They had like all this vinyl white furniture on the roof. And then all these people would go there and they had this DJ and... I got very flirty with this DJ. His name was Chris or something. I can't remember. I thought he was so cute at the time. And, uh, but that was like so much fun. And then we would do like beer bust at the Wrangler on Wednesdays, which 
Oh my god. We didn't. I went out there the first time for Pride Day, and we didn't. I didn't. We didn't go to any of the Pride Day festivals, but we sure went out that whole weekend to Pride Day. That uh, in Denver that weekend. God, that was such a fun summer. I remember I would come back and I would work for like two weeks. And then I was just doing my practice at that time. And then I would take, like, I would leave on like a Thursday and I would fly out there. And then I would get there. <laughs> like, baby, I got car service and everything from the airport. I mean, I thought I was living high on the hog or something. I don't know. But I mean... I flew out there every, like, Wednesday or a Thursday. Like, I would see all my clients on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then I would fly out there on, like, a Wednesday evening. And then I would get out there, and then I would stay till, like, Monday and fly back on a Monday. So I was out there, like, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, five nights. And then three weeks later, I would do the exact same thing all over again. It was so, oh, my God, I had so much fun that summer. I think I went out there, like, four or five times. I was thinking about moving to Denver, and, um... He really wanted me to move out there. I mean, I was literally getting ready to move to Denver when I went on my date with Alex and met him. And I just was like, I'm not moving to Denver anymore. Isn't it sometimes funny how you wonder, like, well, what would have happened had I moved to Denver, you know? I mean, I'd obviously be with somebody else or alone still. What would my life look like? I remember I had planned that I wasn't going to be in private practice if I moved to Denver, that I was going to go back to working in a treatment facility. And um, my friend and his husband said I could stay with them for a couple months. Oh my God, they have such a gorgeous place. And um, until I got on my feet and got a place to stay. And there's an area of Denver, I think it's called like Lodo. It's like a really artsy area, professional artsy area, and it's like younger, and that was like where I wanted to move. I wanted to get like one of these like lofts that was like, you know, cement floors, and um, like poles in the middle, and just like one of those like open lofts, you know, that's what I wanted. I think I was going through a transition period in my life then and I think that we all go through transition periods you know where we're like morphing into something new I kind of feel like I'm doing that right now with my life you know like and I think it's okay if you welcome it and you're kind of like okay I'm excited for this next part of my life like who am I going to be you know like, I never thought that YouTube would be a thing, and now I have to kind of think about it like it's a thing, you know? Like, it's something that I love to do. It's a major part of my life, and, um, you know, where is it going to take me? What's it going to do, you know? What do I want to do with it? I'm not at a point where I could make it my full-time career at all, but I would love to do that at some point, you know, even if it just was opportunities through YouTube that I got. And I don't mean, like, sponsored videos and things like that. I mean, like, maybe speaking engagements or, you know, whatever, something like that. Somebody tweeted me and said that they um, nominated me for a streamy this year for personal vlog or something like that. I was like, oh, my God. But I only get, like, a couple new subscribers a day on this channel. But, like, I'm, I was telling Tanya last night, I'm like, even though I only get, like, three to five a day, like, it, that means so much to me. Like, this channel has progressively slowly grown, and I love this channel. Like, this is my favorite, like, this vlog. I just love getting on here and talking to you guys. And it's so funny. I'll go back and just, like, randomly pick out a day and see what I was doing that day. It's so fun. It's like just picking out your old, like, diary and, like, opening it, you know? It is six o'clock and I need to be getting my butt home to start getting ready for this date. So I'm gonna get off here and I will talk to you guys probably later tonight after our date. All right, I might show how, how cute we look before, but we'll see. All right, love you guys. Okay, I'm all ready for date night. Alex is getting ready, he hates my shoes. But my foot, I'm wearing these Birkenstock clogs. And I don't really care because my foot is killing me from when I was dancing in Miami. Now, these glasses I like better. They give me a horrible headache. Yeah, I like
I can see there. You're like, they don't even make a difference. Let's go check them out. As a result of it, beauty is pain. Okay, and then I want to take Alex's music in the background is not. Thing. I don't use it all the time. I hope his music is not like stopping this from being able to be filmed. What do we think? All right. Well, I will see you guys a little bit later. I'm back. Okay. It's late. It's two o'clock. And I'm going to get gas. And I kind of want a fountain coke, but I've like drank so much water tonight. I keep on having to go to the bathroom. I hate this angle from my camera, like on me. This doesn't ever look cute unless I'm like kind of looking right at it. But anyway, I've been drinking so much water tonight. But you guys have these swell bottles. I love these swell bottles. Alex actually got me this. Um, but I'm afraid that if I uh, get a fountain pop, I really want a Diet Coke for McDonald's. I thought I brought my wallet. But I'm afraid that if I do, then I'll have to go to the bathroom because I keep on having to go to the bathroom. Um, anyway, we have had we had a really great day tonight. So we went and saw Dance Kaleidoscope. And Dance Kaleidoscope is like innovative ballet. I don't really know how, how else to explain it. I have the program back here. When I get to the stoplight, I'll show you. And the one that we went and saw was called Dance is a contact sport. And it was like all like sport themed stuff. Here, I'll show you. Can you guys see it at all? Do you see that? So it was like, it's like ballet, but then they do it like, uh, there's just, it, I, I don't know how to explain this. They did all kinds of things. Like they did this one that was like very tribal and it looked like they were all like running a marathon. And then they did one that was like a football game was it a baseball game? It was a baseball game. But then there was like a couple sitting in a chair and he was like watching it on TV. It was very kind of sad actually. Like, I just find dance to be so moving. I, I mean, I love anything artistic. I love anybody that like, you know, I don't know, I just, I'm so attracted to any of that. And I found myself like sitting there crying and it's like about this couple and he wasn't paying her any attention because he's like watching this like baseball game. But in the background, they have all these people like playing baseball. And then they did this thing where it was like, he would like switch the channel and it was like all these like old time commercials, like Mikey will eat it. And they actually played like the old commercials and then these people like acted them out like through dance. It was very cool. And um, I mean, it was just really a cool experience. And we were like the third row and um, Alex got the tickets for it. And we had just like perfect view. And then after that, um, Alex was like, where do you want to eat downtown? And I was like, I don't care. Why don't we go to Thunderbird? There's this old place in downtown Indianapolis called Thunderbird. And actually it used to be a bar like back in the day, I guess in the forties. And um, they reopened it. My grandfather actually was a bartender there um, before he passed away. My grandfather passed away at 39 from lung cancer and um so they have like really cool stuff but we like got there and I know 
my husband does not watch my vlog, so he's not gonna watch this and get upset. I don't even know that he recognizes this about himself, but like when Alex is like hungry and like he's ready to eat, like he starts getting kind of moody. And he was hungry when we got downtown anyway. And then he started getting more and more hungry. And um this gas station is closed. I forgot. Great. Um so we sat down outside and it was like a beautiful evening and then he was like I really think we should have just gone to a restaurant. I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, where we could have gotten, like, real food. Because I'm, like, really hungry. And I'm like, okay, well, this is a real restaurant. He was like, would well, you want to go down to that Mexican restaurant? We were in Fountain Square. Which is, like, a really cute, artsy part of Indianapolis. All new kinds of restaurants and stuff. And I was like, babe, we can go wherever you want to go. I don't really care. And he was like, okay, let's go to that Mexican restaurant. So we, like, got up and walked away walk down the street and we passed this other restaurant that was like brand new that was called Pilgrim and it was very quiet and there was like a band playing inside and outside they had like this outside seating that was really neat and so he was like let's eat here and I was like are you sure and he was like yeah let's eat here well it was one of those like hipster upscale restaurants that like every restaurant in Indianapolis is right now you know and um, I mean the wait staff was all gorgeous and dressed real cute and um, it was fun. I mean, we sat outside and he had a glass of red wine. He always drinks, he drinks Malbec. I mean, I don't drink, so I don't know what any of that shit means. But Alex was like, they have non-alcoholic drinks on here. Well, here's the deal with non-alcoholic drinks. A lot of like non-alcoholic beer and things have like alcohol in them, like even just like 2%. So I don't ever drink them, right? And I also don't like the idea of like drinking a drink that looks like a drink, if that makes sense. Like, I would never drink, like, an O'Doul's, even if it had absolutely zero alcohol in it whatsoever, because I just wouldn't want to hold, like, a beer bottle. And there's something different to me about that than, a, than, than like, a root beer, which I would do. I know it sounds crazy, but... So, when the waitress came, I said... I was asking her what soda is, and she's like, we also have, like, ginger beer. And I was like, is it have alcohol in it? And she was like, no. And I was like, it has absolutely no alcohol in it. And she looked at me, and she goes... No, are you sober? And I said, yeah. She goes, no, there's absolutely no alcohol in it. It's important uh, for our owner that there's drinks that have no alcohol in it. And I said, okay. And I said, but does it look like a beer? And she goes, no, it doesn't really look like a beer. It looks like orange juice. So I got this ginger beer thing because Alex was like, try something different. So I did. And it was like very spicy orange juice is what it tasted like. Um, it was really good, but like I wouldn't want to drink five of them, you know? And, um, then we got this appetizer, and it was, like, this big pretzel, but, like, very gourmet pretzel. <laughs> like, a pretzel you get in the mall, but very gourmet. And then it had, like, dipping sauces with it. And then Alex got these meatball things for starters. Was actually, the place was, like, not too expensive compared to, like, you know, a cheesecake factory or something like that. It was, like, those, the, each of the sides, the appetizers were, like, 4 or $6 each, which I thought was pretty reasonable. This pretzel was huge. And then we each got the same pasta, which was like, it tasted like lasagna, but it was in just a pasta form. I can't even, paradello or something like that. It was incredible. And it was like $14 each, which I don't think was too bad. I mean, it was super filling. And um, so yeah, we had a really, really nice time and we walked around Fountain Square for a little bit and talked. And then we came home and Alex is like, are you in bed already? And I was like, no, I just like, I went and bought that new shirt and I like wanted to take it off because I had been in it all night long and it was kind of this itchy material. I was like, I just wanted to be in something comfortable. So he was like, well, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. What are you going to do? And he's like, I guess I'll watch some TV. So I came downstairs and was like, let's watch RuPaul's Drag Race. So we watched RuPaul's Drag Race. We watched Untucked. Excuse me, Untucked. And it was one o'clock. And then he was watching this episode of Friends. He loves that show. And I said to him, I go, I never understood this show. Like, I do not find this show to be one. I mean, he was, like, howling with laughter. Like, my, my mother used to do that with Will and Grace. She loved that show, Will and Grace, so much. I never liked Will and Grace. And um, he's just, like, I mean, literally howling. And so many of my friends back in the day loved Friends. My friends loved Friends. And, uh, he, and, and, like, I almost kind of felt like he was saying this to piss me off, although that's totally ridiculous, right? He goes, Jennifer Aniston's hair looks so good. Okay, I love Jennifer Aniston. I cannot stand her. She gets on my nerves, like, completely. I don't think she's 
I know people love her, okay? Please do not unsubscribe to my channel for my opinion, but I just don't like her. She does nothing for me. I feel like she's had the same hairdo for 20 to 5, 30 years. I don't really think she's that attractive. I think if it wasn't for that show, she wouldn't be anybody in Hollywood. I don't really get the draw of Jennifer Aniston. Like, everybody's like, she's the girl next door. There's lots of girls next door that are gorgeous. What about Jessica Alba? She's absolutely phenomenal. Or like Megan Fox when she was in that Transformers movies. You know, they were the girl next door. <laughs> I just don't like Jennifer Aniston. I don't know what it is about her. She just bugs me. And everybody's like, well, watch that movie Cake. And I haven't seen that movie yet, so I probably do need to see that movie. But, um... So then he was watching Friends, and I was like, well, I'm going to go outside and read for my uh, readathon. So I was out there reading this book called The Yearbook. <laughs> it was, like, printed in, like, 1980. Actually, no, I think it was, like, late 80s, and it's about this kid in a small town, and the yearbook gets misprinted, and all these poems say that people are going to die in them, and then they start dying one by one. It actually sounds very cheesy, but it's kind of scary. <laughs> But it is totally like a teenager book. And I was getting kind of spooked sitting out there. And I go, well, I'm... Alex. Oh, he came out and he was like, honey, I'm going to go to bed. And he gave me a kiss. And I was like, I'm going to go film my vlog a little bit. He goes, you're getting... And he knew. He was like, you're getting scared reading out here, aren't you? Because that's what happened with Helter Skelter. I could not sit out there and read Helter Skelter because I thought I heard people walking down the street. I was terrified, right? But you kind of want to be scared while you're reading those books. And, you know, next weekend is P.P. and Peter's Bachelor Weekend because Alex is going out of town. And I don't want to start reading Helter Skelter or knowing he's out of town. It's like we were, like, planning all of our excursions to go to Mexico. Or when we're in Mexico, like, things we're going to do. But Alex wants to go see all these shark movies. And he's like, I think we should do them. Watch those. And he is just trying to, like, antagonize me. He's like, I think we should watch these movies before we go. And I go, oh, see, I just hit it. My gas just went on low. I was like, no. I go, I won't. And he's like, oh, we need to do this one where we're like swimming through the river. And the, I said, oh, I can't do that. He goes, you couldn't swim through the, I go, oh, no, 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 no. I need to be able to get out. And he was like, well, you're not going to be able to do any of these things. I said, I just need to be able to get out of the water. And I go, and he goes, well, I'm going to, I want to do these swimming things. I was like, oh, no, you, you can have at it. I don't want, I don't need any part of that. I'll do the nighttime cruises and all that kind of stuff. He thought it was so funny. Anyway, I gotta get my gas now. I'll be back. I'm back. I had to go inside. I'll tell you why. Two for one gummy worms. I thought I bought the sours. You guys know I hate sours. Squiggles. Each brightly colored flavor worm has two fruity flavors. Cherry, orange, lime, lemon, strawberry, grape. These gummies won't wiggle around, but you might find from the yummy... T you might... Hmm? I don't get it. Just one minute. Mm. Just ever smell your candy. There is this woman that works in there and she's so nice. And she's Nigerian. And I've talked to her a lot about like her country and things like that. And um, when I come in sometimes late at night, There's this guy in there who apparently is Nigerian too. Was like they're talking about like their country a lot, but he's like a lot younger than her. But it feels like he's hitting on her. But I think they're just friends. But he is so good looking. And he's usually dressed in a suit. But tonight he had on like a Volcom t-shirt. And this flat bill hat. And he's probably like 30, 35. I'm probably 35.
I kind of like to just sit at the gas station and watch and see who gets out of the cars. Aren't I so weird? You guys do love gummy worms. They are so good. This dude is cleaning up all the trash out of his car. You should. A messy car means a messy life. He is walking like he has stood on his feet all day long. I do not need both of those bags. Okay. So that was my evening. And tomorrow we're going out for brunch. And I have a bunch of sobriety stuff to do tomorrow night. And Alex has to work super early on Monday. So we'll probably have a lunch. The Sundays are kind of brunch and romance days. <laughs> That's how you keep it family friendly. I mean, I want to read a bunch more tomorrow too. friend Dustin Daly, I've talked about him on here a lot, <laughs> did a mukbang tonight of Bojangles, which I've never heard of because we don't have them here. I said, I was a girl, listen, <laughs> people are going to start saying we are twins because our videos are so similar. And he was like, what? I wanted to do an eating show. I go, well, a lot of people don't like them, so just get ready. I like watching them. I don't like when people smack their mouth and all that kind of stuff. And People say that Trisha Paytas says that in her videos, but I can't really tell. My friend Con, well, he's not a good friend, but Connor O'Brien, he's a booktuber. He's one of the first booktubers I ever found. And I have to say, I had, like, a YouTube crush on him. Do you guys have YouTube crushes on people? Even if you knew, like... I mean, I'm married, and he's... I don't even think gay. And, uh... posted something on his Twitter tonight about how he's been mostly watching aquarium videos because he's putting together this aquarium and I'm like that is so me Look, I haven't even been watching like the stuff I used to watch I haven't watched an Amy Slayton video or a Trisha Paytas video and I mean I'll watch like, a couple minutes of them and then, like, I go and I do something else, and then I forget to come back and watch it. That's what happens with me. I only have, like, a couple YouTubers right now that I consistently, literally watch, like, every video they put out. This stupid thing. Do you guys get YouTube crushes, though, like, for real? I always get them on people that just seem so normal, though, you know? Like, not people... that are like super gorgeous. I'm not really attracted to that anyway. I think it's too much. I've always been kind of more attracted to just like the normal person, you know? I hate that whole bag. Okay. Huh? 
Alright, go there, you ready? Can I get a large Diet Coke, please? Alright, they want or not. They have a Rollo McFlurry. Oh my god. So. Hold on, please. I will not. There's a dollar. I got some change. Hold on a second, please. My life is a mess. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Thank you, Thank you. Have a good one. Like, when I met Alex, it's funny because he was, like, so, like, not into dressing up, and thank you. He was so into just, like, I mean, I love how he dresses now. And I love that, you know, he always cares about how his hair looks and all that kind of stuff. But, like, when I met him, he was so just, like, relaxed. Like, just, like, t-shirt and jeans and shorter hair. And never cared that much about, like, how his hair looked. I mean, he did. But not spending, like, time in the bathroom and stuff. Excuse me. And, um... To the most perfect Diet Coke in the entire world. Thank you, McDonald's. But, um, like, I'm just not, like, I just, like, there was this guy sitting in front of us tonight. Well, I'll tell you what was sad was there were, like, four guys sitting in front of us tonight. And I remember them from going out to the bars back in the day, like, the gay bars. And, um, they're probably all in their 60s now. And they looked, like, old. Like, very old. And, um, I was like, I used to, like, go out and party with these guys. Like, this is weird to me. And they're very conservative looking, you know, and bald heads and, like, but, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it just is, like, I still inside feel like I'm 18, you know, so it's, like, weird. But the one to the, the farthest was very handsome, and he was, like, in a sport coat and, like, a button-down collared shirt, but he had, like, white hair. And I, like, was, like, I kind of looked at him. I was, like, hey, this guy's familiar. This guy's familiar. Do you ever, like, not recognize somebody until you see him with somebody else? And then, like, his boy, his husband, I think it was his husband, because they were both wearing rings, like, turned, because, of course, I was totally stalking and doing my investigations, because, you know, that's what I do. Um, he, like, turned to the right. I was, like, oh, my God. Like, I totally remembered it, who it was, because they were one of the very first couples that I ever knew where there was, like, a huge age gap. And God bless them for 20 years later still being together, you know, in a relationship. I think that's awesome. But, um, I was like, sure as shit, there he is. And I thought, well, he's my age, and he's with somebody that's 20 years older than him. I, I know for a fact that guy's 20 years older than him, because I can remember when he started dating him. So, he's my age, dating somebody 65, baby. I hope he's getting the retirement. Tanya always tells me, she's like, if your marriage to Alex doesn't work out, she's like, next time... Because I always date people younger than me. I've always been with people that are like five or ten years younger than me. I mean, not when I was 20, obviously, but like my ex was like five years younger than me. And my very first boyfriend, when I was 20, when I was 23, he was 19, so he was four years younger than me. He still looks like he's 30. My God. But anyway. Um, Tanya's like, we're gonna, you're gonna do it like I'm Anna Nicole Smith, and you're gonna find somebody that's older and has a shit ton of money, and we'll just take care of you for a <laughs> I've never been in a position where I've taken care of the person I'm with, though. It's always been pretty much just like 50 50, you know? Which I think is great in a marriage and a relationship because it takes out the problem of money. And it's interesting. Because Alex and I have the biggest age gap, and Alex has always been the one that contributed financially the most to the relationship out of all of the people that I've dated. And, um, I mean, when he was in school, we kind of had a deal, you know, that, like, I would pay the majority of the bills while he was in school, and he would, like, 
do more stuff around the house and all that kind of stuff. But he always like bought dinners and took me out on dates and things like that, you know, to make me feel like he valued me. And, um, you know, the second that he graduated from college, because he graduated, like when I met him, he was in school. So when he was like late compared to, he had taken a couple years off from school. And, um, so when he graduated and he started working like right away, doing some contractual work and stuff like that, I mean, we've, he very quickly like started like paying, you know, he was like, I want to pay half of all the bills. I want to, you know, help out in ways that I haven't been able to help out before. And so he's always been like that. He took me out on the whole date tonight. I was like, oh, this is nice. It is nice, you know. He booked the whole trip to Mexico that we're going on. I didn't have anything to do with it. He goes, here's your picks. These three different hotels. What do you think? And he went through a travel agent. This is so funny th with me. Like, a lot of the girls that he's friends with, they go through a travel agent. Because, like, the travel agencies know the best deals and the best resorts, actually, from, like, having been there or talked to people. And I was like, do people, I mean, is this 1985? Do people still, like, go to travel agents? Like, I had no clue, right? She put this whole package together for us. So, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get on Expedia and see if I can get it cheaper. She got us a really good deal. And she found us a resort I had never heard of before. And it's brand new. I was really excited. I'm really excited about it. And uh, so, yeah, we're excited about that. But he, like, booked the whole thing. I was really impressed. Like, one night he said, do you want to go to Mexico for our birthdays? And the very next day he was booking it. I was like, this is crazy. This is so not Peter Mon. I sit on an idea for six months, <laughs> which is why nothing ever gets done. <laughs> Oh, we're just telling all the truth tonight, aren't we? I guess we're just letting it all out. That's all right. You know what a sad thing about YouTube is? And I don't really care about this. I'm still going to make the videos, but like... I did my video on social anxiety. Oh, a little bunny rabbit just ran across the road. That's supposed to be good luck. Did you know that? Once the bunny rabbit runs in front of you, it's supposed to be good luck. Um, I, I should go to the casino, but it's way too late. <laughs> um, I, and I have sweat shorts on, and I would never go to the casino in sweat shorts. <laughs> Not that I ever look hot at all going to the casino. I haven't been to the casino in weeks, like two weeks. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, what was I saying? I don't even remember now. Why can't I have you guys here, really, to tell me what I was saying? <laughs> My friend Tanner, I watch his YouTube videos, and he has friends do that Miranda Sings voice. <laughs> I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> if you're watching this, Tanner, this is for you. <laughs> be more famous star. I can't do her voice at all, but I do love her. What was I going to say? I don't remember at all what I was saying. Oh, well, I guess it didn't need to be said. Now, it was probably something like really important and profound, and you guys were like, ah! You, <laughs> you just left us right there. We'll never know what it was that you were supposed to say. I was going to, okay, I was spilling all the dirt on myself. Who'd care? All that. The bunny ran in front of me. Then what did I say? rewind. I should totally stop this and rewind it and see what I was talking about, but I just know it wasn't even that important. Oh, I know what I was talking about. Okay, true story. If you wiggle your toes, it sets off neurons in your brain and it helps you remember things. My friend Krista told me that. If it's not true, do not leave it in the comment section below. I would rather prefer just, I would prefer to just believe in life that if you wiggle your toes, it helps you remember things. Okay, so just... But anyway, I wiggled my toes and I remembered. Um, one of the things that makes me really, really sad about YouTube is this. Is that I know that people want to be entertained and all that kind of stuff. But you know, like, I can do like an eating show and I can get like 8,000 views on my main channel. Or I can do an Amy Slayton video and I can get easily 12 or 15,000 views. I don't even have to say anything about her. I could just do a... I could just do a 10 minute video looking like this and just title it something like Amy Slayton is a scam artist and apologized and it would get 15,000 views right 
But I do a video, a heartfelt video, talking about social anxiety and how to overcome it. Something that so many people email me about, so many people message me about, and it gets shit views. And you know, like, I don't really care, because it's not like that's what I'm here for anyway, but it makes me sad that the videos, like when I did the one called Dear Joey that was about my mom's alcoholism, you know, the ones that I think that are like, the ones that I'm proudest of making, because I think they really have a message, you know, it's sad to me that people would rather watch videos about Jeffree Star kicking his boyfriend's brother out of the house. And that video gets 50,000 views. That is a sad state of our reality, you know? And I'm sorry, but like, if you fit into that category, like, and I did for a while. Like, I got, you know, I loved watching those videos. But do I really give a shit if Jeffree Star kicked his boyfriend's brother out of the house? No, I don't. And, you know, the reality is that those videos are two minutes of justification of why they're making a video, five minutes talking about it, kind of, not really, and three minutes closing it. So they're just BS videos, and they're getting 50,000 views. But all of these important videos out there, I mean, and I'm not talking just about mine. I've seen a lot of really important videos that I think are pivotal, that are really important to be out there on YouTube, that people are doing some really powerful videos. You know, there are kids on YouTube that are scripting together videos and putting together these videos that take them weeks to put up, and they put up and they get 200 views, and I think, makes me so sad when these other crap videos, but you know, maybe I ought to do the crap videos. I will tell you one thing that I have to think of is that, you know, like my magazine videos are very easy for me to do and people seem to like them and they get a good amount of views. But is there, you know, if I'm doing a video about social anxiety and that's powerful, right? Because maybe somebody is sitting there and they go, oh shit, I really relate to this. Peter's helping me. I hope, I hope that's what's happening. But if equally I'm doing a video and it's a rant video about the fidget spinner and somebody is sitting in their you know house and they're depressed and they watch that video and it makes them laugh or it makes them cheer up then I think equally that video is just as important too so you know maybe I've talked myself out of this I don't know maybe those Jeffree Star kicking his boyfriend's brother video out is important I don't know you know I don't know maybe they are important maybe they keep people entertained and they keep people undepressed Hell, we all need that, right? If, and, and listen, there's always going to be gossip and there's always going to be drama channels. And I don't hate those people for it. I just don't. I just think there's a way to do it. I think there's a classy way to do it where you don't have to rake people over the coals and hurt them, you know, and say things about them that are horrible. There are a few out there that, that I don't know, just, you know, whoo. It hurts to have people say stuff about you, you know? I learned that in, you know, first grade. I always talk about this first grade sitting at the lunch table. And if you guys don't know, it's something that I did a video about on here. But so the first time that I knew there was a difference between me and the other kids at school was when um, it was in first grade. I've told this story a lot before, but I'm going to tell it again. It was in first grade. And my one of my favorite things was when... You wouldn't go through the lunch line. You, do you remember when the, the gym would turn into the lunchroom? I love that. But anyway, and I went to this small little elementary school called Mo Mohawk Trails Elementary. And uh, it was like one of those days where you would go into the lunch room and you wouldn't go through the line because there would be bowls of tomato soup on the table already. And then you would just sit down there, right? And I loved tomato soup. Like, I loved tomato soup when I was growing up so much. It's still my favorite soup. And um, I sat down there that day, and I was with all my friends, all the kids, you know, all the boys that I had gone to sleepovers with and birthday parties for the last, you know, two years or whatever, kindergarten and first grade. And something was different that day, and they were all, like, laughing. And, uh, and you know, I, I look back on this now, and I think that there must have been an event that occurred before that, that, like, where they got talking behind my back before the, the conversation occurred at the lunch table. But... Everybody was talking about not drinking the milk. And it was like, we used to get those peanut butter sandwiches and then the white homogenous milk that came in the little cartons and then the tomato soup. And everybody was like, don't drink the milk, don't drink the milk. And I had like my milk in my hand, okay? You know, little Peter with a little bowl haircut and 
my French toast shirt, which was, I don't know why we called it that, except for, I think the brand might have been called French toast, but it was like this plaid shirt that I loved. And there I was sitting there, you know, and, um, my friend next to me said, well, why can't I drink the milk? And he said, and this other guy said, this is first grade, okay? He said, because if you drink the milk, you'll end up gay, because it's, see, it says homo on it. And he, and my friend turned and looked at me, and he said, don't drink the milk. I mean, it was very serious. First grade, okay? And the other kid looked at him and said, oh, no, Peter can drink the milk, because he's already a homo. And then they all started laughing. And I remember that feeling inside, and I just kind of went inside myself. You know, and I remember I didn't touch that milk. I didn't drink that milk. And I didn't eat the rest of the meal. Um, I didn't really know what to think. But that day, things changed forever. And I didn't get invited to birthday parties. And, um... I rarely got invited to sleepovers. And I really didn't have a lot of friends, you know? girls were my friends, but then people would make fun of me for having girls as friends, but girls were safe. <laughs> and so, like, as strong and as confident as I like to think that I am, I'm 44 years old, and what, it's been 38 years since that day? And he's still there, you know, at that lunch table inside, hurt. So when people tell you to get over shit and people say, why are you making such a big deal out of stuff? That lunch table incident and those sons of bitches that didn't know any better sitting at that table at six years old fucking ruined my existence until I was 18 years old because I became the class faggot. And nobody let me forget it. From first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. It's a lot of fucking years to be the class faggot. And I never once came out, and I knew I was gay, and I remember, you didn't come out back then. If you came out, my I, if I had come out, I would have got my ass beat. On principle, you know? It was interesting because Alex and my, my car was so dirty and I came out of uh, the thing tonight and somebody had drawn two penises on the back of my car. I mean, like, they didn't know. You know, they were just dry, probably walking by. It was not anything. And But I used to come out of my car in high school and, like, people would, like, with lipstick put, like, write, like, all that stuff on my car, you know? And penis pictures and faggot and suck a dick and, you know, I mean... It's horrible. And I think the fear was worse than anything. The fear of not knowing what the next thing was going to be. It wasn't the dealing with what did happen. It was the fear of not knowing what the next thing was going to be. What are they going to do to me next? What are they going to say to me next? Because see, when it happened at the lunch table, okay... When it happened at the lunch table, and I wrote this on the Huffington Post, and they featured it, because I think so many people related to this. When I sat at that lunch table in that October that I was waiting for Halloween and Boo Radley's and trick-or-treating, okay, and tomato soup, I didn't know that that day was going to forever change my existence, but it did. And, um... And I don't blame those kids today, you know? I mean, I call them motherfuckers, because they were. And I remember when I told my mom at, like, 32 that this had happened, all of my... I mean, she never knew. I kept it hidden from her all those years, because I was afraid of my mother being in pain over knowing that I was being bullied. And my biggest fear was that I was going to walk across the stage at graduation, and they were all going to call me faggots and stuff, you know? And when I told my mother... At 32, she said to me, tell me who they are and I will call their parents because they did not raise their children very well. <laughs> you know, I, oh, I had such a great mom. And she would have too. I mean, I said mother, come on now. But she would have, you know. 
So I don't hate those people today, but I don't understand it. And do I have a little anger and resentment? Oh, sure, I do. Yeah, I do. Because they got to experience a different childhood than I did. You know? It's hard. Love your children. Love their differences. Love your nieces and your nephews nephews and the neighborhood kids and just be, you know, a bright face for some kid out there because you don't know what they're going through inside. And childhood and elementary school and junior high is a scary place. I remember I went there with a, I did a documentary a couple years ago about gay married couples in the United States for Russia TV. And he took me back to my elementary school and he said, this is such a place of innocence. And I looked at him and I said, this is a battleground. To me, this was a battleground. And it was. But I don't want to feel that way on a daily basis anymore. You know, I want to be forgiving and I want to be peaceful. And so I have to take a look at that and go, you know what? They were kids. It's not an excuse. But maybe they didn't know any better. I don't know. Or maybe they had no clue what they were doing. I'm sure they didn't know how bad that was going to impact me. And if they knew that today, they, I think looking back, they would never have done those things, you know? I hope. And I think we all should be offered forgiveness. But they're still motherfuckers. Anyway. All right, you guys. I'm going to get off here because I'm almost at a half an hour of talking straight. And I thought I was going to only talk for 10 minutes and make this a short one tonight. But guess not. <laughs> All right. I love you guys so much. And tomorrow is the beginning of a work week. So I hope you're having a good work week by the time this is up. I love you and I'll talk to you later. Bye.